Okay, here's our uh, new little pulse motor um, experimental base. We'll run through it a bit. Uh, you will see that I have here two coils laying on their side. They do have steel cores. They are the uh, coils out of shaded pole motors that you find in microwave ovens to drive the fans. Um, and they are laying on their side as you can see. The system is read switch triggered, um, no transistors, nothing very simple um, and across the two coils I have a full wave bridge rectifier which is going to a neon, um, still having arcing problems due to the 110 volt uh, spikes we get from our coil and um, the read switches aren't lasting so long, such is life. Okay, the two coils are hooked in series. Um, not going to get too much into inductance and resistance and all that. Um, we can do that at a later date. This is just to show you where we're at at the moment. Um, I have a 1 ohm CBR here, as you can see. Downside up, but I'm sure you can read it. Or is it? Yes. 10 watt, 1 ohm, um, and this multimeter here is going to be reading the AC voltage across that resistor. So um, you can see there we're set an AC, and there's a reason for that, which we will go into a little later on. Um, so that's going to be showing us the millivolts across our 1 ohm resistor, which will equate to milliamps. AC current. We're doing that because this one is designed to generate AC current. Or, should I say, it generates a back current into our power supply. Um, which, of course, will just feed back into the capacitor with the smoothing cap on the output of our power supply. And you'll see I have the power supply limited at 2 milliamps. Um, there is also a reason for that. We don't need any more than that to make this run, and 8 volts is our running voltage for this test. We have 6 magnets around our rotor, um, <coughs> and one side, is, this side is all south field, the other side is all north field, so they are not alternating fields. Um, and the reason for that is because we wanted a push-pull situation um, where the read switch comes on about there and it pushes this magnet away and pulls the other one towards the end of the core but the read switch stays on as that magnet passes through the core and switches off about there and then once again it'll switch on about here push-pull situation generating situation, switch off, switch on, push, pull, and so on. So our current from the power supply um, is forward through our CVR um, as soon as the read switch switches on to push it and pull. Uh, that gives us our rotor motion spins the rotor, drives the rotor, that is our motoring action um, but from this point on that is a generating action and that sends current back through our CVR which is of course stored in the uh, smoothing cap on the output of our power supply. When this reed switch is in the exact position which I have marked here takes a while to find it. Um, this machine draws no current from the power supply, apparently. Um, the power supply, as you can see, has a 1 milliamp resolution. And um, we are limited to 2 milliamps in this case. And our ubiquitous multimeter here 
going to be showing us the AC current flowing back and forth through that 1 ohm CVR which is on the positive uh, negative input side of our power supply there okay so I don't think I've bumped that uh, it looks pretty close um, does it work as a generator well it's that little neon there you can see that flashing just by spinning it like this what we'll do now is we'll turn on our power supply and we'll actually spin this the right way wait for it to pick up speed and we just heard the power supply click means it is now settled at a stable current draw. The little neon's beating away there quite oddly. It's like a galloping horse. I don't know why it's doing that. Like I said that reed switch is not so healthy. But anyway, on with the show. Flashes going through it. Oh. And you can see I just killed it then. I said the timing has to be absolutely precise. see we're getting you can see the reads which is not very happy between six and nine millivolts AC across our one ohm resistor there and we did notice that, that we are set uh, limited to 2 milliamps from our power supply as you can see there and we have 6 to 6 to 9 milliamps AC across our CBR so it is definitely working as a generator as well as a motor and um, apparently we're not actually drawing any current from the power supply the current is being uh, shuffled between the capacitor and the inductors uh, making it some form of tank circuit although it would be way out of tune nowhere near its uh, resonant frequency or anything but um, it's also um, we're also generating current from those coils um, as I showed you in the start of the video as to how that happens and I do have a very slight wobble in the rotor which may be um, why the reed switch is missing a couple of beats. Doesn't like it there. Like I said, the timing has to be precise. And the reed switch is probably not the way to go, but it was the quickest and easiest way to do it at the moment. And we'll be switching over to transistor soon and replacing that reed switch with a coil that will fire up the transistor definitely got a miss there somewhere but nonetheless uh, if 
effect we want we're still getting as you can see and are showing no DC current is because we have a higher AC current between 6 and 8 which is um, half of that is above 2 that we have limited the power supply to so there you go and apparently at the moment this pulse motor runs on nothing Of course we know that, that won't be the case, but um, the amp meter on our power supply is telling us there's no net DC current flowing out of that power supply um, and our meter showing us the AC voltage across our 1 ohm resistor is indeed showing us that we are generating um, power that is flowing back into the power supply. So I don't often see, uh, in, fact, in fact very rarely do I see current reading zero from my power supply with any pulse motor other than this one so far. So we're off to a good start um, and those coils seem to be uh, quite well uh, suited for this job. Now the only problem is switching to a transistor we may not get the generating effect because it will not stay on like our know, reed switch does with the magnetic field. So um, that may be a uh, bit of a no-no and -no. we'll hunt down a heavy duty reed switch see if we can't get the voltage up to around 24 or something see how we go then. But uh, as a uh, first up and run this is doing exactly what I wanted it to do and uh, that was as I explained at the start of the video some power is drawn from the power supply to give us our motoring effect and the inertia of our flywheel um, giving us the generator effect due to the fact that the reed switch remains closed until such time as the magnet gets near the end of the coil. Now we can turn the power off here as well. If we stop that, um, you'll see settings remain the same. It volts limited to 2 milliamps. This meter is showing nothing across our CVR. But if I spin this wheel, See, we do indeed get that generating effect. And a little neon buzz of the way. And our power supply is, of course, turned off. So, there you go, that's what we have so far um, a pulse motor that is able to return energy back to the source and um, that's exactly what we wanted it to do. Now it does work as a better generator um, if we move our timing right up that way. You can see we generate a lot more power. Unfortunately it doesn't work so good as a motor there. So, um, but it will work as a motor there. I'll turn the power back on. And uh, this is working as a um, zero force type motor. Oh, get the timing right. It's not very exciting.
do generate a lot of um, alternating current this way. The motor does run not quite as fast. But nonetheless, um, you can see the voltage is way down because the current is limited to two, which we might be able to turn that up, I think, and get it to work a little better. About five milliamps. Nope. So it's very hungry on the current. In zero force mode. And it does indeed work as a generator in this situation. Due to the fact we're using a reed switch. Not a transistor. And a good inductive kickback. But still, still uses a lot of current. But does generate a lot of. Um, does generate a lot of current as well. And we can actually switch this over back to this timing mark here. Hopefully it'll self start. There we go. So as you can see, it works quite fine. Once again, we have the same situation. And the alternating current is still present across our CVR. Okay, so there you go. It's um, looking like we're off to a good start. I might try fine tuning the uh, reed switch situation. I'm going to get a uh, larger reed switch that can handle a bit more current and uh, see how fast we can get this thing going uh, and still show a zero current draw by our power supply. Like I said, that is due to the AC current being produced by the machine and that is thanks to using the reed switch which remains closed during the generating phase um, and it is allowing the current to flow back into the supply unlike a transistor which would switch off and the total flyback current would be going through that little neon there. Uh, the neon only flashes as soon as the reed switch opens and that is just after the generating phase um, and of course then our um, loop circuit from coils through reed switch and power supply um, the resistance goes sky high and so then the voltage across our coils goes sky high once the reed switch opens and our little neon fires the inductive kickback Okay, thanks for watching guys and um, we'll keep you up to date. And uh, it'd be nice if we could get this just to run off a cap all by itself, wouldn't it?